time for command number five, love. Uh, or to love one another, love your enemy, love your adversaries, love when the person is unlovable. So we're going to get into this command. Again, it's week five, so make sure that you are starting to develop uh, encouraging uh, practices in your group. So maybe you have someone uh, who tells the story they've read ahead, or you've already discussed, like, hey, walk us through... Um, Walk us through the story, uh, walk us through the explore more options. If you want to practice the three circles, uh, have someone ready to practice the three circles or the 15 second testimony. So as you're prepping and preparing for this week, make sure that's in mind that we've got people who are prepared to do portions of this because we want them to be able to replicate this. Um, they may not be immediately ready to replicate this group as soon as they get done because spiritual maturity takes time. There is no fast track to becoming spiritually mature. But as far as like this kind of content, this is all like bottom uh, level 101 intro into Christianity. What does it mean to be a Christian? Why do we come and pray? Why do we worship? Why do we love? So, so this is all pretty easy foundational stuff. We're not getting into crazy difficult doctrines here. Uh, and we're definitely not getting into some of like our own personal habits and issues. That's going to come more in extended discipleship, long-term discipleship. Okay, But for now, this is all great content, so make sure you've got people who are ready to go through a portion of this curriculum as you go. So let's jump in. Command of Christ, number five, love. Love. Okay, love one another. Love the Lord. All right, so we're going to get into this. Uh, again, you're figuring out the, the process at this point. You're getting used to the rhythm. Um, first, third, second, third, 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 third. Um, you're figuring out this rhythm, so we're not going to spend a ton of time from here on out with these, but just only some reminders that, hey, this is week five. You really should have um, others participating in this, leading portions of this, because they're getting used to the, the, your participants are getting used to the rhythm too. So, Someone lead us in loving accountability. Someone lead us in vision. Any of these things. Um, someone who's going to pray for us in the midst of the care. So these are all good. Make sure you've got your 411 training. You're going to need that every time. Uh, so care. Don't take too long, but don't just push through it. Make sure you're spending enough time that everyone feels valued because discipleship is more about imitation and they're only going to imitate the people they like. So you need to make sure that you're showing that you genuinely care about them. Um, maybe you're better at that than me, but I tend to like just like, hey, let's just get through this curriculum. Slow down and love people, okay? So, because it's appropriate for this command. All right, so care, loving, accountability, vision, that's the circle. You know that. Okay, so scripture. This week it is Matthew 22, 37 through 39 for the command slash memory verse. Just a reminder there. Uh, and it is, uh, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Quoting Deuteronomy 6, the Shema. And uh, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, All the commands and the prophets hinge on these two. All right, so that's the command. Tell the story. Uh, the Good Samaritan is our story. Luke 10, 25 through 37. And just a real quick telling of the story, some highlights for you to think about. So there's a man, he's a Jew, traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. That was a dangerous road because um, the way it went, there's lots of rocks, lots of hiding places, and it was known for bandits. So he's traveling by himself. Not a good plan, but maybe he didn't have a choice. Traveling by himself, headed down to Jericho. Of course, uh, bandits find him. They beat him. They take all his stuff. Everything was cash in this day, so they took all his stuff. Um, he would have had nothing left, and he's now in a ditch on the side, bleeding out, potentially, uh, and beaten. So then uh, three people come by him that Jesus describes. There's the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. Now the priest and the Levite, they're headed to um, Jerusalem. And more than likely, as they're headed to Jerusalem, they're headed to the temple. Uh, maybe they live there or something like that, but this is idea that they're probably serving in the temple. Now if this guy's dead... And according to the Mosaic law, if they touched a dead person, they became unclean. And they were unfit then to serve. So if these guys live somewhere else and they're traveling to Jerusalem, and um, 
they touch this dead person, they're going to lose the opportunity to serve in the temple at Jerusalem. And for many of these uh, Levites and priests, the rabbis, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to serve in the temple. And so don't just lean into these religious punks who are selfish. And I mean, that may have been the case that, but I think Jesus was really trying to drive in like, hey, these guys were going to do a good thing, but they came across an opportunity that was a better thing. And that was to help this guy out. And instead they chose process, program, polity. They chose all those things over a person. And love has to be for people more than it has to be for a person. Okay, and so then, of course, the Samaritan, the guy who is dirty, the guy who's half Jew, half something else, and the the Jews despised them. That's the guy who helps this guy out. And, of course, when Jesus comes to the end and says, who showed this man more love? The priests and the Levites, they had to admit in the story the Samaritan did. Um, why? Because loving people is more important. Then you read the story aloud. That reinforces everything that you just said. You can then discuss the story, uh, which is the discover portion. What did you learn about God? God cares about people more than opportunities. God cares more about people than your business, career, or anything like that, because that's what these Levite and priests are thinking through. So that's good for us to hear. Uh, what did you learn about the people? The people were not like God. Uh, they didn't love people the way God loves people. And we want to be people who love God as, or love people as God loves people. Uh, and then what should we obey? Love people. Um, more sometimes it's just being aware that when you see a need, don't just walk off and turn a blind eye and be like, oh, isn't that tragic? Oh, isn't that sad? No, instead you stop and you say, oh man, let me help this guy. Uh, then you're going to do practice. Now, you just discovered where it says retell the story. You can, but you've already told the story, read the story, discussed the story. So now you can like talk about the story again if you really want to. Or you can do three circles or the 15-second testimony. Those things are good for practice. I lean into three circles. Then you do explore more. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. That's what it is. All right, no, John uh, 15, 13, and 1 Corinthians 13. John 15 is, if you abide in me, you shall bear much fruit. John 15, 5. Uh, it's if you abide in Christ, you will love people like Christ loves. You don't have to force it. Um, sometimes we think we have to force this love. Like, okay, I, I don't really like you, but I'm going to love you. I'm going to no. If you're if you're loving the Lord, you will love people as the Lord loves people. Um, and we're going to get into that further. So, First Corinthians thirteen, that's actually in the context of persecution. So Paul is saying, like, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast. Uh, and it's in the middle of difficulties, in the middle of actually working with an adversary. So there's an extra weight to that love. Uh, why do we love? John 13, 34 through 45. Because Jesus loved us first. We love because he first loved us. So that love that Christ extended to us, now we extend to others. We become a conduit of Christ's love to others. And that's really important because when we're treating them as Jesus would treat them, there should be a point, a point, especially if they're not a Christian, especially if they're an adversary, that they begin to realize there's something different about us, there's something peculiar, and it's a good thing. It's, a, it's intriguing. They're like, man, I, I treated you so terribly. Why did you treat me with goodness? God loved me, and if he can love me, then I can love anyone else. And honestly, it becomes natural when I'm just focusing on God. All right, that's a great way then to lead into a gospel conversation. All right. Uh, who do we love? Everybody, right? The love God, love your neighbor. And who's your neighbor? Everyone's your neighbor, okay? All right, so uh, John, or sorry, John 14, 15, how do we love? Loving Jesus means we obey him. If you love me, you will obey my commands, Jesus says. And then John 21 through 17, loving others means telling them what God has done for you. The most loving thing a Christian can do is to share the gospel with somebody else. That should become just part of what we do as Christians. The most loving thing we ever could do is to declare Christ. One, it's an act of worship to him. But two, it's to share him so that someone else might find the hope and the joy and the love that we have found. And man, what a great segue into our last third. Fish and follow. You said you were going to share the gospel with Phil on Thursday. How did that go? Again, not to be shaming, but to be encouraging. All right? So... Uh, and even if it's a terrible story, like someone's like, oh, it's a red light experience. That's okay. 
listen, we're not called to be successful. We're called to be messengers. The Holy Spirit is the one who does the work. Uh, We can't force spiritual change, by the way. Um, We can just put people in the presence of the Holy Spirit and let him do what he does, okay? And then pray over them and send them back out for another week. Set new goals, whatever you need to do there. Uh, This has been Command of Christ, number five, love.